I heard crew overboard. I think these are orcas, guys. We leave the house around 8 a.m., go on the boat, and we um, unlock all the hatches to get the GPS and the bags ready and kind of secure the boat. So once we left the marina, we carried on driving through the ocean just to um, try and find different things. skipper decided to go to an underwater canyon which is known for having lots of, of life especially this time of year there's lots of fish at the moment so we're seeing lots of superpods um, and also with superpods of dolphins can also come whales so as a skipper one of my of course my first role is to captain the boat and make sure that everyone is in in safe and in, in good position to work I really like to do this it's a, a great challenge for me not just the part of skipping the boat but also looking for for the animals because when we are working here we don't really know where the animals are so there is always this rush and this challenge of uh, founding the animals and founding the the clues that will lead to the groups of animals or the animals and I I really like those challenges in my in my work. What we do when we're on Ketosh, we're actively looking for cetaceans, is we use a quadrant system. Two people will be sat at the front looking out to the front and then two people will be looking to the back to look out the back. So the reason we do this is to give a full 360 view of our surrounding waters, which increases our chances of seeing stations rather than everyone just looking at one place. I think the weather is the main make or break for what we do. If it's raining, you can't see through rain. If there's sun, your eyes get blinded by the sun. If there's a lot of wind, the sea surface is very choppy and it could be harder to make out a fin or a blow or a jump. So the first sighting we saw was a group of bottlenose dolphins. When we come across a, a sighting of dolphins, the first thing we do is kind of get the cameras out to take photos of the dorsal fins for photo ID. And we also um, record the GPS point, so the waypoint, so that we know where the animal was and also what time we saw them. Once we've left the group, we fill out a sighting form, which includes data about how many individuals there were, whether they were adults, juveniles, calves, or neonates and also we have to estimate the group size. We also write down information about their behavior, so if they were socializing, feeding, traveling, and also how they interact with the boat, so if they approached the boat, if they were indifferent, and if they evaded the boat. So it kind of gives us an indication of how different behaviors may change with or without the presence of the boat. In terms of responsibilities, there's quite a lot. Uh, obviously, when we depart from the harbor, our objective is to try to uh, find marine life that is just occurring in the region. And then you have to plan your approach accordingly, uh, and you have to continuously check whether or not the group is reacting uh, to your specific approaches. So I personally try to uh, be very conservative, observe them quite a lot, and let them dictate uh, how the approach is done.
Sometimes, even though we are a research team, we get uh, very interesting encounters that are just unusual, let's say. Uh, and probably the highlight of that day was the wreckfish. So wreckfish are similar to a grouper. They spend their teenage years just floating underneath pieces of garbage, uh, leaves, pretty much whatever is at the surface. So it was pretty nice to see this wreckfish just hanging around, uh, kind of like a, a traffic barrier and just as if it was its own castle. And to be able to see it this close is, I think is quite an intimate experience. We were told that there was a mink whale spotting in the area, so we went to the last known location. So in order to try to spot it multiple times, everybody on the boat was dead quiet. And oh. then we would hear the noise in the distance and everyone would be like, there it is, there it is. And we got to see the mink whale surface probably six or seven times. And that was the first time I've seen a whale in the wild since I think I was eight years old. And that was an amazing experience. We saw a bunch of birds circling, which is a sign that there's probably a cetacean in the water that they're looking down on. So we go to check it out, and then the closer we get, we see this dark line on the horizon, which was actually a line of a pod of dolphins. And there was like at least a hundred dolphins in the water. In the middle of a feeding frenzy almost, there was what's called a bait ball. And it's essentially hundreds, maybe thousands of either sardines or mackerel. We knew that something was going on because the surface of the water was covered in seagulls and other species of seabirds. So on that same day, we also were lucky to see a juvenile loggerhead turtle. They usually just like chill at the surface before they go and do their deep dives. So it's always quite interesting to look at their behavior as well. Unfortunately, when we're out to sea, we also see a lot of pollution, meaning we see a lot of garbage. And if we spot any garbage, we do deter and pick it up. When plastic breaks down in the ocean environment, it has really harmful chemicals that actually disrupts the endocrine system of cetaceans. And so when I see plastic in the ocean, I, it's really heartbreaking actually, because I'm so aware of the damage that it's causing for marine species and the damage it causes for cetacean reproduction is only one example for one species plastic has puts all species in danger to some capacity. The feeling that you have in the sea when you look around and you see garbage floating is something I cannot describe with words because this feeling is like very inside you but make you feel horrible like thinking how the environment would be without this and how it is is awful. We do what we can while we're out at sea to reduce as much of the impact of it as possible, but we do unfortunately see some animals with fishing line wrapped around them, or I think a few weeks ago they found a group of bottlenose dolphins playing with a plastic bag, which is really quite tragic because it just makes you very angry at the world. But yeah, we do what we can to try and help that. Usually after about five or six hours on the boat, the skipper will decide it's time to go back to the harbour, dock the boat, and then also clean the boat as well, and lock everything away, and just basically prepare the boat for the next day and make sure it's all safe. 
So all of the data we collect from a sighting, whether it's behavioural data in the sighting form or the photos, it's all really important for conservation effort for the dolphins. Also the data we collect is used in scientific papers by the researchers here. We collect quite a variety of data and it's all very useful in different ways. It can take a while to collect all of it in the field and sometimes it's quite difficult to determine different things. It's all very useful and it's all used by AIM to um, help the dolphins. Thank you.